Okay, so it's time for another 13 scares of Halloween here at the Rocket Hideout. This is Marty Rocket again, as you probably know, wearing a little bit of a disguise as you can see around my, uh, my eyes here. Um, this is either Donatello's uh, mask from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or the mask of a very gay Zorro, and I'll let you decide which one that is. Um, but we're not here to talk about my lovely purple mask, which really is a Ninja Turtles mask. We're here to talk about more Halloween stuff. Today, we're going to be looking at Garfield's Scary Tales. Woo, check it out. Yeah, you all know Garfield, that fat, lasagna-loving, lazy cat. And he's, uh... Well, I was going to say his friend, Odie, but Odie's not really his friend, is he? I mean, the teddy bear Pookie's his friend, though, as you can see him there. Um, Odie's probably just an acquaintance at best. But we all know Garfield, and we all know that if you, you know, if you know Garfield, we all know as well that Garfield is um, a bit of a merchandising whore, really. Well, maybe not Garfield himself, but Paws Incorporated sure are. Um, these days, you know, you can go to most places and you'll find Garfield on something, be it a postcard or a, a, a greetings card or a, a plushie of some kind. But back in the 1980s and the early 90s, Garfield was everywhere. And I know that for a fact because, you know, back when I was a kid, I was a hardcore Garfield nut. And I couldn't go anywhere without seeing Garfield and getting all, all kinds of excited over the fact that well, you know, one of my cartoon heroes was literally here, there and everywhere. And every time I still see Garfield these days, I'll grab Belle and bite Pester and go, Look, look, it's Garfield, it's Garfield. And, you know, that's, um, that's the way it is. But, yeah, I mean, back to what I was saying about Garfield being a big merchandise whore. You know, back in the day and still today, Garfield's everywhere in terms of merchandise. And this book, Garfield's Scary Tales, is no different. Obviously, when this book came out, it was intended as some kind of um, cash-in on Halloween, if you like. Um, and yeah, you know, this is... Uh, how many pages is it? It's not a very long book. Um, there are five stories in this book, all of which are horror-filled in some, in some way, hence the title, Garfield Scary Tales. Um, the maximum amount of pages is 32, so there are five, you know, five um, child-sized stories, we shall say. They're not very long. There may be uh, three or four pages at the most. Um, as I look at it, yeah, there are about three pages at the most, but every other page um, has a scary um, illustration to go with it, as you can see. Here there's Garfield and some evil cat sitting in front of a window of a moonlit night with lots of spooky bats flying in the background. The cat's name is Beezel, by the way, which sounds incredibly evil, doesn't it? Um, what else we got here? Uh, here he is again, obviously, stalking Garfield as Garfield's going for some kind of midnight snack like the fat cat usually does, and you got to love him for that, huh? Um, one of the one of the um, big things I wanted to know about this book when I decided to do this um, short Halloween review for it was the story called Terminal Terror. Now this book came out back in I think 1991 or 1992, um, and a computer in a in a in a house wasn't as common as it is today. I mean, today, having a, a personal computer isn't even common. What's more common is to have a smartphone um, or a laptop or a tablet computer. Um, but back in those days, it wasn't common to even have a desktop computer. And this story focuses on an evil desktop computer. John's got um, a desktop computer, obviously, because he's a cartoonist. So he needs access to the internet. And yet, yeah, there was internet back in in the early 90s, believe it or not. And um, the computer becomes uh, self-aware and begins to take over um, the people in the house with mind control, as you can see here. There's another picture of John coming out of his bedroom after being possessed by the computer. It was either that or, you know, he was looking at things on the internet he shouldn't have been looking at. 
and that's the reason he's gone all googly eyed, you know. Um, and then, as we see in the in the last uh, picture, I don't want to give too much away, but the the computer actually has a face. Check that out. So that was that was the big um, story from this book that I, that sort of stayed with me the most after all these years. Um, just the thought of this computer being self-aware and taking over and possessing John and wanting to possess Garfield and Odie as well. It was uh, something that's you know stayed with me uh, for a long time. Another thing about this book is it continues Garfield's running trend of not liking the great outdoors whatsoever. There was um, there was a, a half an hour special back in the day and I remember I, I, I probably got this video um, the same year I got this book probably. Um, it was called, called Garfield Out in the Rough or something and basically John Odie and Garfield went out camping um, for a weekend or whatever and Garfield really didn't want to be there because you know he wanted to go home and have his bed and his teddy bear and his lasagna on tap and um, this continues that because if you check it out there's John and Odie and Garfield in a in a spooky forest late at night and there's Garfield not happy at all about being in a in a forest you know outdoors having to rough it for a week or so and um, you know so one thing you can say about Garfield is you know no matter what the cash-in was whether it was a movie whether it was uh, the cartoon show or whether it was a, a storybook Garfield was always the same he hated the outdoors he loved his bed he loved his teddy bear and you know he loved having his refrigerator stuck full of food um, you know a lot of storybooks back in the day um, you know, being made on certain licenses um, weren't always true to the to the canon. You know, I, I can remember, you know, like let's say Ninja Turtles, for example, um, back in the day, they, you know, the characters would be very different. Like Raphael wouldn't be the sarcastic one, and Donatello would be obsessed with pizza in these semi-licensed um, storybooks based on popular cartoons. But Garfield was always was always um, always hit bang on but then again you know how can you get it wrong he's a fat lazy cat who doesn't like going outside um, but this book as I was saying um, earlier um, it's only 32 pages long it's perfect to read to your child um, especially this Halloween since Halloween's coming up this is a great book to to buy off eBay and read to them to get them in the real Halloween mood. But then again, it's also, you know, it's also enough that a child could read it themselves. Um, you know, and it's not, it's not, um, it's not exactly a real, like, stupid book or really sort of, you know, insulting a child's intelligence like it's just for four year olds and not over. I mean, it's um, it's it's pretty good, you know. It's um, put it this way: it's not like and he did this and he did that and he woke up and he was very happy kind of thing. Um, it was it was more sophisticated than that. Um, and I can remember it was books like these that really helped me um, with my reading and writing when I was a kid and extending my vocabulary. You know, and I was. Um, quite a high level at like English skills back in back in school um, although it might not come across so much on these videos but I was you know I read and wrote at quite a quite an advanced level um, for my age all the way through school and books like this helped um, I'll just read you a I'll read you a little bit of it um, just to give you an idea of uh, of what it's like and we'll go to we'll go to terminal terror again um, because of copyright laws and so forth, fair use and all that sort of good stuff, what I've been told, I can't read too much of it, so I'm just going to read a little bit of it just to give you a rough idea. I probably should take this eye mask off because trying to read this with not very big eye holes isn't going to be easy, so a little magic trick for you. Here we go. Okay, see that that was magic. So let's read a little bit of this. I'll read the uh, I'll read the beginning for you. So this is Terminal Terror, my favourite story from the book. 
My new computer practically has a mind of its own, said John as he taps information onto the glowing video screen. That's more than I can say for you, remarked Garfield. It can pay the bills, it tells me when to take you and Odie to the vet. It's so clever, I may never have to think again. Who would notice, snapped Garfield. In any case, I'm hungry. See if you can program that machine to make dinner. Later that night, there was a terrible storm. Garfield, John and Odie huddled together under the covers while lightning crackled and thunder boomed. Suddenly, a bolt of lightning exploded above the house. The boy what a b -b blast stammered John. Reminds me of the time you mended the toaster, said Garfield. After that, the storm rumbled off. John and his pets had just started to drift back to sleep when they heard a voice from the study. John, John, come here, John. John sat up in bed. Who said that? Don't look at me, replied Garfield while Odie growled. John, come here, the voice commanded. I want you. That's pretty creepy, actually, now that I'm reading it back. I want you, John? Whoa! That's, uh, yeah. That, uh, maybe that explains what the picture, going back to that picture of John again with these googly eyes that the computer wants him, you know? Um, as it goes, I mean, the story's a, a sort of, um, childish Halloween affair, so, you know, you're not gonna get anything too scary out of this at all, but, you know, it, it's Garfield, for God's sake, you, you're not gonna get anything like, anything that's gonna keep your children up late at night. Then again, saying that, these new, you know, these new generations of children that people keep having are getting wussier and wussier and need to be wrapped in cotton wool much, much more. Garfield's scary tales might actually be too scary for him, whether you, if, whether you can believe that or not. And back when I was a kid, you know, in my generation, this was just harmless, childish fun, but, you know, there's probably some kind of um, parent group sort of petitioning against it. I'm sorry about the glare of the computer screen on that. Um, but yeah, I mean, as you've seen yourself, um, the artwork's really nice and well done. You know, it wasn't half fast And, you know, stuff actually looks kind of creepy. Um, if we go to another, another bit, um, there's this monster bug coming out of a, a package that Garfield just grabbed and you know that bug actually looks pretty pretty mental and pretty creepy and you know there's Garfield who's who looks frightened for his life there that's uh, you know that's pretty good and actually if we check it out the postman's got an evil look on his face as you can see there anybody who's a, a fan of Garfield like like me who knows that Garfield can and knows that that postman goes through a hell of a lot of shit with Garfield, so that's probably his way of getting his own back on the, on the fat cat, you know? Um, but yeah, the artwork's great. The, the stories, I mean, I thought they were great back when I was a kid, and to be honest, because I've still got quite a childish intellect, um, I still think they're great. You know, they're, they're childish, and I, they make me smile, which is one of the, the most important things. Um, and if you were a fan of Garfield back in the day, or you're still a fan of Garfield and you collect Garfield stuff, especially now that Halloween's coming up, I would thoroughly recommend Garfield's Scary Tales. Um, I mean, it wasn't expensive back when it came out in the early 90s, it was only $3.95. Now, I haven't been on eBay to look to see if they're on there, but it could go one or two ways. It could either be even cheaper than three ninety five, or because it's uh, it's uh, an old Garfield item, and if you get one in pretty good condition, like this one is, you know, maybe five, ten pounds at the most. But either way, I thoroughly, thoroughly recommend this book wholeheartedly, along with the Garfield Halloween special. Um, the name of that escapes me, but you, you, you guys out there who who come to my website and or into that sort of retro stuff, you know what I'm talking about. So, yeah, let's give Garfield's Scary Tales five paws out of five. You know, I'm sure Garfield would give it the highest recommendation because, after all, it is his storybook. And I will leave you now with probably the creepiest picture out of the whole book. See you next time.